morning, Messiah Lancers. Um, I wanted to share with you a story that is one of my favorites around this time of year. We're in Holy Week. I don't know if you've uh, remembered that or not, but we are in Holy Week, so we are getting ready to celebrate Easter. And um, I have a story about a little boy who um, also had a way of celebrating Easter. You might be wondering what these uh, eggs are next to me. Well, part of the story is in those eggs, so we're going to reveal that as we go along. Our story is called... Benjamin's box. Long ago, in the faraway land of Palestine, there lived a boy named Benjamin. His small, humble home was nestled into a wall of other houses, almost hidden on a narrow road back street in the bustling city of Jerusalem. Benjamin loved Jerusalem because God's temple was there. More than that, Benjamin loved God. His grandfather had taught him many things about God when he was just a tiny boy. Benjamin talked to God a lot. He whispered prayers each night at sunset, and in the morning he always gave thanks for the new day. Benjamin's parents worked hard weaving and selling cloth, but their family was still quite poor. So Benjamin helped out by taking odd jobs around the city. Everyone in Jerusalem seemed to know Benjamin. They could always count on him to be honest and work hard. One bright spring morning, Benjamin sat outside in the sunshine. In his hands was a wooden box. Hi, Benjamin, called his friend Eli. What's that you've got? It's my treasure box, said Benjamin. My grandfather gave it to me before he died last year. He said it was very, very special. Eli opened it and looked in. There's nothing in it except for some old straw. How can this be a treasure box? Benjamin shrugged. I don't have any real treasures yet. But my grandfather said this straw came from the bed of a baby who was born in a stable. My grandfather was a shepherd then, and he said the baby would grow up to be a king. Why would a king be born in a stable with cows and donkeys? Eli laughed and closed the box. I heard some sort of king is coming today. His name is Jesus. Want to come to the city gate and watch for him? Sure. My grandfather took me to hear a man called Jesus once. I liked listening to him. Crowds were already lining the street. Some people cut palm branches from trees and handed them around other handed them around. Others laid garments on the street like a carpet. Wow, said Benjamin, he must be a king. The two boys squeezed through the throng just as a donkey entered the gate. That's him, Benjamin pointed to the man on the donkey. That's Jesus. Hosanna, Hosanna, cheered the crowd as they waved their palm branches in the air. Hail to our new king, yelled an old man beside Benjamin. Why does a king ride an ordinary donkey, asked Benjamin. The old man turned. It means he comes in peace. Jesus has come to set us free. Hail King Jesus. Benjamin looked into Jesus' face as he drew near. Jesus smiled back as if they were friends. The donkey plodded along and Benjamin followed, pushing through the crowd to keep up. At last he drew close enough to pet the donkey. A small tuft of hair came off in his hand. That night, Benjamin placed a bit of the donkey fur in his treasure box. Hmm. Let's see what's in egg number one. It's a little donkey to remind us of that Palm Sunday. In the next days, Benjamin and Eli went to hear Jesus whenever they could. One day, as they waited, Eli whispered, The priests have offered money for someone to betray Jesus. Why? asked Benjamin. What has he done? He only speaks the truth. They should listen to him. The priests are jealous of him. They want Jesus to stop teaching, said Eli. Someone should warn Jesus, said Benjamin. I'm not afraid. I'll go. He pushed through the crowd until he reached one of Jesus' friends. He tugged on the man's sleeve. Excuse me, sir, are you with Jesus? Yes, I am, the man answered. Please, I need to warn him. He's in danger. The priests are offering a bribe to betray him. You must tell... Shh, said the man. Do not repeat this. I'll take care of it. And he slapped a coin into Benjamin's hand. Thank you, kind sir. What's your name? Judas Iscariot 
said the man as he turned away. That night, Benjamin tucked the shiny coins into his treasure box. Hmm. Let's see what's in egg number two. Ooh, some silver coins. Hmm. Okay. The next day, Benjamin was asked to help his aunt get ready for unexpected guests. They would be coming for Passover dinner. He went right to work carrying water jugs. Did you hear that guest of honor is Jesus? said a servant girl. Benjamin's eyes opened wide. Imagine, to serve such an important man, he must work hard and do his very best. Two of Jesus' friends came to help, and Benjamin listened as they talked of Jesus. They loved him so much. Soon Jesus arrived and the supper began. If Benjamin listened carefully, he could hear some of their words. But what did Jesus mean when he said the wine was like his blood and would be spilled, and the bread was to be broken like his body? It made no sense. Then Jesus said someone would betray him. Benjamin smiled. He wasn't worried. He knew that Judas would prevent this. After supper, Benjamin found a broken cup. He saved it to remember the night when he served Jesus. So let's see what's in egg three. I bet you can guess, huh? It's a little cup to remember the Last Supper. Later, Jesus and his friends left to pray. Benjamin wanted to pray too. He followed at a distance, watching as they finally stopped in a garden. Benjamin sat beneath an olive tree and broke off a twig. He couldn't hear Jesus, but he knew he was praying. Benjamin prayed too, and as he prayed, he rubbed the twig between his hands. Before long, his eyelids grew heavy and he soon fell asleep. Loud yelling startled Benjamin. He leaped up in time to see soldiers taking Jesus away. Stop, he cried. You can't take him. He hasn't done anything. Shh, boy, said one of Jesus' friends, holding Benjamin back. What's wrong, demanded Benjamin. Why are they taking him? They want to question him. Benjamin pulled away. Why didn't you stop them? But the man just shook his head and walked away. All Jesus' friends were gone now. Benjamin saw the smooth twig in his hand. Dear God, please take care of my friend Jesus, he prayed as he walked. At home, he placed the broken cup and the twig in his box. So let's see what's in number four. It's a set of praying hands to remind us of that prayer in the garden. Benjamin, did you hear the news? asked Eli the next morning. They've locked Jesus up. Everyone says that Judas Iscariot got a bunch of money to betray him. Benjamin gasped. He had told Judas about the bribe. Maybe this was his fault. He said goodbye to Eli and wandered through the city. What could he do? Was there any way to help? Sounds of shouting made him stop and he turned to see an angry crowd. Jesus deserved that beating, snarled an old man. The heretic claims to be God's son. He should be stoned, yelled another, shaking a fist. What's going on, asked Benjamin. Did they hurt Jesus? What do you know about this Jesus, demanded the old man. They all turned and stared at Benjamin with angry eyes. N nothing, he stammered. His gaze dropped to the ground where he noticed a small strip of leather. He picked it up. It was from the whips used by soldiers, and it was wet with blood. He tucked it in his tunic and slipped away. Why would anyone beat Jesus? Hmm. Egg number five. I've got the whip. Peter was one of Jesus' closest friends. And he once promised Jesus that no matter how dangerous things might become, he would always be loyal. Jesus could depend on him, 
But that began to change when Peter realized that those who planned to kill Jesus might want to kill him too. In fact, Peter was so afraid that he denied even knowing Jesus. Just the evening before, when Peter had promised to be loyal, Jesus told him that he would indeed deny knowing him, not just once or even twice, but three times. And in fact, it happened just as Jesus said it would. The rooster was still crowing when Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. Peter was so ashamed that he ran away and cried. So egg number six shows us Peter's rooster. Benjamin continued to walk. If only he could make them re release Jesus. But what could a small boy do? He heard loud cries as another crowd gathered at the end of the street. Hail, King of the Jews, yelled a soldier as Benjamin pushed his way past men and women. And there stood Jesus. Benjamin looked into Jesus' eyes as Roman soldiers threw a shabby robe over his beaten back. He expected to see hatred, but instead he only saw love. Just then, a soldier shoved a crown of thorns onto Jesus' head, and another struck him with a stick. Benjamin's eyes filled with tears. Why were they doing this? A few days ago, everyone had called Jesus a king when he entered Jerusalem. Now it seemed they all hated him. Benjamin squatted down and buried his head in his hands. Please, God, he prayed over and over. Please make them stop. When he finally opened his eyes, the crowds had moved along, and Jesus was gone. He walked over to where they had scorned his friend and picked up a sharp thorn broken from the awful crown. He ran home. His parents paused to hear the story, then sadly shook their heads and returned to their work. Benjamin placed the thorn and leather strip in his box and cried. Egg number seven. Here we have the thorny crown for Jesus' head. Benjamin, called Eli. Have you heard? Jesus is to be crucified. No, cried Benjamin. He's done nothing to deserve that. Eli frowned. My father says that, the only, that only the worst criminals are put to death on a cross. Benjamin went inside and sat in a dark corner of his house. He did not want to talk or even to think about this sad news, but in his mind he could still see the evil men hurting Jesus. I must go, he finally said aloud. If this is partly my fault, I can at least be there. I can pray for him. Where, where are you going? asked his mother as she opened the door. To help a friend, he said. She nodded and touched his cheek. As Benjamin climbed the hill, he found a large spike. It was like those used by Romans to nail criminals to crosses. He tucked it in his tunic and continued on. Three crosses stood at the top, but he could not force his eyes to look upon his friend. He noticed a small group of people apart from the larger crowd. He knew they were Jesus' dearest friends. He sat near them and bowed to pray. But the only words that came were, I'm sorry, God. I'm so sorry. So egg number eight shows us the nails in the form of a cross. Benjamin watched as soldiers gambled for Jesus' clothes. He tried to shut his ears to their cruel remarks. Finally, he forced himself to look up. Benjamin looked into Jesus' eyes and saw such sorrow and pain that it cut to his heart. But he also saw love. And like before, Jesus looked right at Benjamin. Surely this his, was his way of saying all would be well. Perhaps he would even do a miracle. But instead, the sky turned black and Jesus cried out, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. The ground shook and Jesus breathed his last breath. Benjamin was stunned. Jesus was dead. As if in a dream, Benjamin heard the people move about. He saw a soldier pierce his friend's side with a spear. People hurried to take down crosses and bodies before the Sabbath began. Soon they were all gone and he was alone. He picked up a stone the soldiers had gambled with and looked up at the dark sky. Why had God allowed this? Later that night, he opened his treasure box and placed the nail and the gambling stone inside. 
He looked at his collection. It had seemed so valuable when he believed Jesus was the king, but now the strange items only filled him with unbearable sadness. So egg number nine. Here we have some dice for the gambling. And we have a spear for the spear that pierced his side. Benjamin, called Eli the next morning, come hear the news. Benjamin stuck his head out the window and rubbed his sleepy eyes. They posted guards at Jesus' tomb. Some say that Jesus will return to life. Benjamin perked up. My grandfather told me that Jesus brought some people back from the dead. Maybe it will happen again, said Eli. But the soldiers say they're making sure people don't steal the body. Quickly, Benjamin dressed and raced to the tomb. Could it be? Could Jesus have returned to life? Oh, he hoped so. But the huge stone remained in place and the guards blocked the tomb. With dark scowling faces, they told him to leave at once. As Benjamin walked slowly down the hill, he noticed a bit of white cloth hanging from a small branch. He plucked it off and rubbed it between his fingers. His parents wove cloth like this for burials. Jesus is dead, he told himself as he continued toward home. That night, he sadly placed the cloth in his box. This would surely be the last thing to remember his friend by. He tried to pray, but no words came. He wondered if God even listened. Egg number 10. Here we have the cloth. Early the next morning, Benjamin went to the market for his mother. He used to enjoy the crowds in the city, but now they only reminded him of how everyone had turned against Jesus. He shuffled along without looking up. It's a miracle, shrieked a girl. Benjamin stopped in his tracks and listened. Jesus has risen from the dead. The stone has been removed. Benjamin turned and ran from the market and up toward the tomb. Could it possibly be true? Could Jesus have risen from the grave? In his heart, he believed it could. It must be. He ran even faster. Sure enough, the stone was rolled away. He fell to his knees and thanked God. When he stood, he picked up a sharp piece of broken rock. It must have crumbled from the huge stone. With a joyful heart, he marched back down to town. Jesus was alive. In the market, he met a woman who was a friend of Jesus. I know the good news, he said. Jesus is alive. Yes, she smiled. It's as the prophet said. On the third day, he'll rise. Some of us even have seen him. Benjamin ran home and told his parents. He placed the stone in the box. What a treasure he had now. I bet you can guess what's in egg number 11. A stone. Good guess. <laughs> One more egg. During the next few days, Benjamin and Eli listened as the disciples shared about how Jesus had appeared to them in various places. Jesus said that all this came to pass just so forgiveness could be preached to all nations, beginning right here in Jerusalem, explained a disciple. He said that since we saw all these things, now we can go out to tell others the good news of his forgiveness. Benjamin smiled. Now he understood that Jesus had forgiven him too and he wanted to share the good news. He ran home and got his treasure box, and he went into the streets and gathered all of his friends. Inside this box, he explained, is a great treasure. The children drew closer and listened with excitement. One by one, Benjamin took out each item. He explained how he got it and what it all meant. So you see, he said as he closed the box and looked into their faces, the treasure is really Jesus. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, we can all be forgiven by God the Father. They all cheered and begged him to tell the story again. So have you guessed what is in egg number 12? Nothing. Jesus isn't here. He's in heaven. So 
I hope you enjoyed this book and I hope you remember that the reason we are celebrating this week is because of Jesus and because he loved us so much he endured all of these things that we heard in the story and all of the things that um, we are going to hear about in our services this week and just remember that we are all thinking of you and we love you just like Jesus does and we hope to see you soon and have a wonderful wonderful day bye